President Trump is reportedly taking the initiative, the lead, on tax reform. His team's already working on the rollout, trying to sell it to the public. Come on in, John Fund, National Review. He's going to barnstorm across the Midwest in a matter of weeks, selling, getting out front of tax cuts. They're going to wait to see what happens with health reform, win or lose. Then they immediately pivot to tax reform. If the president does this, it'll be a sign that he realizes his strategy for health care reform was had limited success. He didn't push health care reform. He didn't go on television, answer a lot of questions about it. Uh, tax reform, though, is near and dear to his heart. He understands the issue. He wants to get out. And I think the CEOs will come out and support him. Yes, because he's, he's looking for CEOs to come out publicly and support it. He's looking for local and state government officials to come out and support it. He wants his supporters, the base out there, shouting and screaming, we're for it. It sounds like a pretty good, strong push to me. It's necessary. Remember, the midterm elections are usually decided by the economy. Can this current high stock market and the economic job increases, can they be sustained? The best way to sustain them is comprehensive tax reform that, that lowers corporate tax rates and creates business incentives for businesses to grow. If tax reform fails, you may see a sputtering economy and political trouble for Trump. Well, do you think that the Republican Party is more united on tax yes. cuts than it is on health care reform? You say yes, categorically Absolutely. yes? Yes, because in, with health care reform, you had the Republican governors as a fifth column basically trying to sabotage it because they want all that free federal Medicaid money, and they're addicted to it. And as a result, uh, the Republican Party was more divided on the health care reform than it should have been. You know, it's amazing how far investors have gone to bid up stock yeah. prices, even though you've got trouble for health care reform right. and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, equity values, values $3 trillion added to stock values uh, since the president won. And business and consumer confidence have gone up. And I think it's all tied to tax reform. You're a non-market person. What do you make of this? <laughs> Records I'm in the market. market. Yeah, I know, but you're not, a, <laughs> you're not paid to analyze the stock market, are you? That, that, that's why I'm usually more right than wrong, because I'm not paid. <laughs> Have you bought the big, I think it's a personal question, but do you own like the Microsofts, the Googles, the Alphabets, the Apples of this world? Uh, I bought some of them a few years ago. I've not bought them at these high prices, and nor would I. Did you sell them yet? No, no, I did hold on to them. <laughs> when you're retiring, for heaven's sake. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> didn't, didn't buy enough. Did you, as a non-market market person, did you know that one-third of the entire rally in the S&P 500 yeah. is the result of five stocks? One-third of the entire rally, the value thereof, is those five stocks. Pretty big. We find that incredible. Yeah, we really remarkable. do. Well, just like 2000, we have a new tech bubble, and it's based in a few mature companies now. Oh, and we you're on dangerous ground there, fund. Well, a you can't last forever. A bubble? You think it's a bubble? Uh, this is not like the dot coms. I mean, this is not a you know number these of clicks high, you get. We take you to the high valuations. I think cannot be sustained forever. Okay. Well, on that note, Ooh. we'll go back to politics next time <laughs> on the show. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us, John. Seriously, thank yes, you, sir. Funny.